Okay, I really can't remember the first thing I did. Guys, the last thing. I feel like that's personal. <laughs> the last thing I did, I went to go see... Um... <laughs> watching this hi guys and welcome back to my channel and to the returning subbies thank you so much for coming back to the new subscribers thank you so much for subscribing as per the title of this vlog um i will be doing a q and a session regarding my move to china or just overall teaching esl in china so i received a lot of questions um in my last youtube video as well as on instagram so yeah i'll be answering those today but before we get into it um let me show you guys what i got up to this past weekend um in beijing in dongcheng in my hood my hoodie hood <laughs> but let me quickly show you guys that and then we will get into the video um but also i don't know if you guys can hear but i am actually really sick um, my voice is actually sounding a little bit better so if it disappears here and there and um, just excuse me excuse my voice but we move we move we move we move <laughs> so let's go <laughs> okay so congratulations <laughs> it's fine <laughs> I've done my best and my worst, learned my lessons No matter how hard my life would treat me I'd always get right back up, never worry Cause I got a million reasons to keep hope Hey guys, we are searching for a what, Japanese restaurant for sushi groceries i wanted to get a blender but we couldn't find one so i will order that in line now we're gonna go have a drink yes <laughs> laptop in front of me just in case you guys catch me looking down and just looking at my laptop okay so the first question what does the entire process cost from document to housing deposit cost in total in one okay this is from sunny okay so in my previous video i did speak about the housing costs in terms of my apartment that costed me 6800 rmb which i will pay monthly please take note that china has three tier cities um so it has tier one city a tier two city and a tier three city a tier one city is like your um very expensive um main cities like beijing and shanghai whereas your tier three cities are much smaller and the cost of living 
is much um, lower than the tier one cities so the rent will definitely differ for example my sister pays almost half the rent that i pay and she has a two bedroom loft apartment mine is a one bedroom okay so it does definitely differ depending on where you are and depending on which type of apartment you have selected for yourself okay in terms of the costs um relative to the document process i'm not gonna delve into this one why um please check out my sister's channel anna pukube i'll see if i can include the link of which video i'm referring to in particular in the description box below because she did a whole video of us using an agent um and the cost related and basically step by step what you would need to do so please go check that out okay um, the next question. Can you explain the documentation process from SK? Let's try that again. Can you explain the documentation process from South Korea to China? Okay, so that um, speaks to the first question. Please go to my sister's video. That will answer that there. Uh, next question, when did you apply for the job in China? So my sister and I started our document process in um, around September 2022. And that was leading up to our contract in Korea ending at the end of February 2023. So we wanted to be part of the March 2023 intake. So that's about give or take six months, right? Uh, mind you, we were doing our documents through an agent, okay? We also personally felt as if we started our documentation process late, but that's when we um, started the whole documentation process and that's when we started to look for jobs as well. So September 2022 is when I um, started to apply for jobs in China. Next question. Why did you first come to South Africa for that long instead of moving with your sis straight from South Korea. So I did answer this in my um, video, <laughs> first video about my move to China, but I'll quickly answer it again. And um, the reason why I came to South Korea first, um, instead of um, leaving directly from South Korea is because my work permit was delayed. There was an issue with the medicals that I did in South Korea, where uh, my school basically said that they couldn't read the doctor's notes. So just a tip for you guys, um, you will receive the, um, the document that you need to complete for your medicals, obviously when you have found a school, etc. Please just explain to your doctor that they need to be very clear in what they write on um, that uh, medical documents. Things like normal or none where there's no suggestion. So they need to just be very clear with plain English, okay? So that's the reason why. Next question. What is the first and the last thing, minus leaving, that you did for your move to China? The first and the last thing that I did for my move to China. Jeez, what a question. Who's this? Kathy. Yar, gosh, she's just coming at me. Okay, I really can't remember the first thing I did. Guys, the last thing. I feel like that's personal. <laughs> the last thing I did, I went to go see... Um, <laughs> The last thing I did, I went to go see um, one of the guys I was interested in. Okay, so I went to go see him. That's one of the last thing I did. Um, and obviously family. And then I went to the airport. So that's the last thing I did. <laughs> Wait, don't judge me. This is a safe space. Okay. The first thing I did. Um, I don't know, man. Obviously preparing, buying um, cleaning products buying medication which i'm actually running low on um so for those of you that get sick easily like me or that have sinuses or allergies guys do yourself a favor and stock on medication the medication in asian countries are weird okay i personally find it weird so i will definitely say stock up on medication do not put that medication in your handbag or your carry-on bag put it into your luggage okay second thing stock up on spices that's another thing that I that totally slipped my mind, but it was on my list of things to do. Stock up on spices because spices here are also weird. 
and yeah i just bought cleaning products so um that i could clean my apartment once i arrived in china because obviously i wouldn't know where shops are um and i didn't want to struggle i just wanted to be able to clean and move in immediately so i hope that answers your question run a cafe <laughs> okay next question um is there an agency to assist if yes how much if no please explain is there an agency to assist so penelope i don't know if you're referring to an agency in terms of a recruitment agency for jobs or an agency in terms of the documentation process but i'll answer both so my sister and i used an agent for our documentation process because we weren't in south africa um i will put her details in the description box down below however you guys must use her at your own discretion the reason why i'm saying this is that her service is not amazing amazing okay there was a lot of miscommunication there was a lot of times both myself and my sister had to follow up or ask for updates and stuff like that which i personally don't find cool especially coming from working um in servicing so i didn't really enjoy that and we paid a lot um i spoke about this cost in the previous video if you missed it please go back in terms of an agency for recruitment we did not use a okay let me speak for myself <laughs> i did not use an agency um for recruitment so i posted my cv in the description box below i will mention where i uploaded my cv okay so i uploaded my cv and the school actually reached out to me so i applied directly to the school okay um what that said i obviously didn't just apply to one school which you guys shouldn't do as well you need to apply to lots of schools and apply to or reach out to lots of recruiters best way to do it join the if you are from south africa the south africans living in china group on facebook you will get a lot of recruiters on there that you will then add on wechat and there are a bunch of groups that they can then add you on wechat as well so do that and that will just increase your chances of getting a job guys obviously do as many interviews as you can so that you can get the best offer that is suitable to yourself okay next question if possible if possible please explain how alipay works thank you oh yeah so alipay is basically an app that they use whereby you will um you will upload your card details your bank card details on the app itself right and you will then use the app um it has like a barcode that you will then scan when you are paying for things be it going to the 7-eleven your grocery store your supermarket whatever so you just scan that barcode to pay so you don't give them your card you will rather scan the barcode using alipay um so what i'll do is that i'll just take a a quick tutorial or a quick video of my alipay and just add it in this segment of the video um yeah there isn't much more that i can say about alipay hey but what i can say is that if you are coming to china you obviously don't have a chinese bank account when you're leaving south africa so what i did is that i downloaded alipay while i was still in south africa i then uploaded my south african bank accounts or bank card details on there so that by the time i got to china i was able to you know use alipay because they're not going to take your card so i was able to use alipay um yeah so i hope that answers your question next one what's the name of the vpn you're using we are using astral astral vpn i did say how much it is in the previous video if you missed that please Vuela morale go back okay we are using astro vpn it works absolutely amazing so again what i did while i was still in south africa i um downloaded astral um, vpn on both my cell phone and my laptop just to test it out and just so that it was ready that when i got into china when a girl landed you know i was able to use it etc i have not had any issues with astral vpn 
okay um just a tip i must say when you're in china and you're using chinese applications you need to just always switch your vpn off otherwise it's not going to work okay you're not going to be able to download it so i 100 percent recommend astral um it really works perfectly and i have not had any issues with that okay next question which hospital did you and your sister do your medical check Okay, so remember, in my previous video, I mentioned that I did two sets of medicals. I did medicals while I was still in South Korea. Then I did medicals in um, Science and Joburg. So in South Africa, um, I went to Lancet in Morningside, okay? Because I wasn't on medical aid, it was really, really expensive. If you are on medical aid, good for you. If you're not, <laughs> you're just going to have to suck it up and move. Um, I don't remember the name of the hospital that i did my medical check at in south korea but i'm going to look for it i'm going to look for it and then i'll put it in the description box below okay so i'll put that for you in the description box below who's this vino lisa vino can i just say vino because i don't want to disrespect you so let me just say vino vino i'll put the name of the hospital in south korea in the description box below just remember what i said earlier on in the video i don't know how you're going to manage it but they need to be very clear in terms of what the doctor writes on your medical forms okay next question okay this one's from duncan he says how do i verify my tefl certificate okay so like i said uh, previously in the video you guys need to go to my sister's video about the whole documentation process because you need to get things apostled, you need to get things notarized, things need to go to DOCO, to the courts, etc. etc. So please go watch your video. Um, it will tell you how you verify your TEFL certificates and your other documents. Well not done. Okay, next question. Um Okay, so the next one is not really a question, but more of a comment that I thought I should include in case anybody else was struggling with this as well or was thinking the same thing. So I had, I think there were two people that reached out to me, no, three, that were like, you know what, um, I'm thinking of starting in South Korea first, um, that being teaching ESL, and then I'll move to China because I'm scared of China. Guys, if you have never taught ESL abroad, whether you go to Korea or whether you start in China, you are still exposed to an environment and to a lot of things that you are not accustomed to, that are new to you and you don't know, okay? Personally for you guys, if you feel like going to Korea first and then moving over to China is the best move for you, great, do what's right for you. But um, I'm just saying that you don't know um, the experiences in both countries. So I would just say go with the best offer that you receive, be it in Korea or be it in China. I just personally know that the salaries in China are more competitive, um, but that's definitely up to you. However... Um, just to give you guys a little bit of background for, of um, from a person who came from Epic um, in Korea and into China. Epic was amazing, okay? Since the moment that we landed in Korea, when we started with Epic Orientation, everything was smooth, everything was organized, everything was easy. Um, I just had to arrive and do my job, child. It was so, so easy. So I must say that about Epic. However, again, this is my own experiences. Someone else may not agree with that. So I definitely say that um, Epic in Korea was easier for me. It was a much smoother process. China was, is not was. China is way more difficult than um, Epic was. The reason being is that now I didn't apply through an agency. I applied directly through the school. So everything is basically on me to figure out how everything works. There's no orientation. You literally, you get to school. They show you around and how things work. And you're expected to immediately, you know, adapt and assimilate, etc. So yes, Epic was definitely easier. China's a little bit difficult. But like I said, salaries here are more competitive. So you need to just decide for yourself um where you wanna go what is best for you and what you're gonna do okay um yeah so i hope that kind of answers that comment or elaborates on that comment okay next question 
Hey, hi, hello, hi, do my <laughs> do my long. Um, how did you get your documents ready for China while in South Korea, or did you go back home, guys? Maraking. Did y'all not listen to the first video where I said kile hai, but I said that my documents were done in Korea by an agent, okay? I even gave a roundup of the cost of the agents. Anyways, let me answer. Um, did you get your documents ready for China while in South Korea? Yes. I did not do them myself. We had an agent. She wasn't the best. She wasn't the greatest. At the end of the day, she got the job done, but I would not recommend her. But I will leave her details down below. Um, yeah, so that answers that question. Next one with the documents. Sorry, guys. A girl is suffering. Okay. With the documents, I still have to go to Sakwa and Doko Roots or everything will be done as SK. Honey, when a Cheryl, girl, everything needs to go to Sakwa, everything needs to go to Doko, everything needs to be a parcel, notarized, okay, not everything, everything has its process. However, if you are an SK and you want to use an agent, by all means, use an agent to do all of this for you. If you're an SK and you have somebody else that can do your documents back home, do that. If you're an SK and you have the means to go all the way back home and do your documents, do that. Do whatever is right for you. However, we used an agent. Okay. Again, please refer to my sister's video. It will tell you what process you need to follow in terms of apostolic, verifying, notifying your documents okay um let's see next question hey jess offensive hello hi <laughs> hope you're doing good miguel i'm a little bit sick but we move please help assist us okay did you do an introduction video for china yes so before i continue with the rest of the questions yes i did an introduction um video for my interviews yes so i did a demo video what's a demo video so i basically shot a video of myself teaching a lesson okay so i did a demo video i had my cv um in my cv okay because i have years of experience in corporates and everywhere else or other things that i did on the side just remove all of that stuff because they're not interested in all of that they just want to see your experience in teaching okay so it was the demo video it was my cv and it was a self-introduction video. So where you basically introduce yourself. I come from here. I'm how old, whatever. This is my age. Yeah. So three things. Demo, CV, and um, and self-introduction video. But the schools do, do differ or what the recruiters may want to differ. So they will tell you what you need. However, if you're very serious about this process, have those three things ready and on hand. Because once you get onto WeChat and the rec you're meeting recruiters, they will ask you for these things. And the last thing you want is now to be delaying your own process and be like, oh, okay, let me quickly record this or I'll get this to you next week, Friday. No. So I definitely say get your stuff ready first so that you have it on hand. You've saved it and it's just ready to, to, to go, right? Okay. Um, how was your interview? Listen, the interviews in China are way more chilled and so much more easier than the interview for Epic. The interview for Epic, I feel, is a little bit vigorous, although it's um, a type of interview process that I was used to. Um, but also if you're not used to doing interviews or you're a person that gets anxious or nervous or stressed out, etc., um, don't stress. So what I'd say is, um, just read over your CV, um, just when as an individual, um, know why you have applied for a job, um, know why you want to work with children, um, you know, just those simple things that they're going to ask you about the work environment that you have applied to work in, right? And also just have a lot of confidence. You need to be able to speak well. So remember, they're listening to your English accents as well. So speak slowly, speak well, um, and you'll definitely just nail the interview. So be prepared. Um, but it was definitely, it's nothing to stress about. But yeah, okay. Was it hard or just okay? No, it was easy, okay? Okay, next. Still offensive, Miguel, you're on a roll. Okay, in terms of apartments. 
did you pay for three months advance or your school helped okay no thank god my agent did the things because guys so here when you go apartment hunting you will go apartment hunting with an agent okay and you need to specify what it is that you want out of apartment as well as guys when you're deciding an apartment please 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 check every single thing in the apartment so when I say ask or tell the agent what you want, guys, not all toilets in China flush. Well, they flush, but they don't take toilet paper, meaning you cannot put toilet paper in the toilet. You need to have a separate like bin or automatic toilet thing. OK, so you need to ask if your toilet allows toilet paper. You need to ask a lot of things, whatever you think is important. That one is a major, major, major thing. So ask about that ask if you need to pay three or four months um rent in advance ask about how much the deposit is ask about how much the agent fee is um you know ask all of these questions okay or you sign anything or before you agree personally like i said in my previous video i'm paying month to month that was something that my agent organized for me thank god um no my school is not helping me or they are not paying for my rent i am paying for it out of my salary because on my contract my salary is inclusive of the amount for rent although for my sister for example um her salary is exclusive of the amount for rent meaning her school will pay for her rent okay so yeah like i said things differ I'm in a tier one city, she's in a tier three city, um, we're in different apartments, use different agents, so things do differ here in China, okay? Next question. How long did you stay in SK in South Korea? I stayed in South Korea for one year, based year, amazing experience, loved it. If they had doubled my salary i would have done another year <laughs> i had an amazing school guys i had amazing colleagues an amazing co-teacher you know what i just the support that i had everything was easy it was easy 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 it was so nice again that is my experience not everyone in the sk will say that they relate or have the same experience okay um still the same person and do you have a bachelor's in education or pgce heard china requires those nowadays guys what's making the minimum requirements for teaching esl um as a native english speaker here is a tefl okay your tefl course that's accredited and a degree okay tefl degree this thing of bachelor's in education pgce -E, pgce all those things are extras but i'm not saying they're not important if you have a patch bachelor's in education if you have a pgce you have a better chance of earning a higher salary meaning that you are in a position to negotiate with recruiters okay because you have those things relative to education whereas if you have a tefl and you have a degree um you are still able to get a really good job here okay so yeah you don't need to have a pgce and a bachelor's in education to get a job here a good job that is okay next one are you a homeroom kindergarten or, or uh, uh, uh. <laughs> are you a homeroom kindergarten or elementary teacher getting that beijing is so competitive well done oh god a supreme Sian, Sian. sorry for mispronunciation so i am a homeroom kindergarten teacher hey guys so okay i'll do like a, a life update maybe like three or four months into the job but so far so for starters i'm a homeroom kindergarten teacher there are four of us in my classroom it is me um uh, my title's english specialist it is um my lead chinese teacher it is another Chinese teacher and then it is what we call a Chinese life teacher okay so I obviously will teach English okay the two Chinese teachers will teach everything else to the kiddies I don't know if you guys can hear talking outside but if you can I don't know what's going on but excuse 
so the two Chinese teachers will teach Chinese to the little kitties and then the life teacher is someone that cleans the classroom um the kids eat their meals in the classroom as well they eat like four or five times a day guys hey so she dishes up for them she cleans up with their messes because obviously little kids va messy man va messy so there's four of us in the class so that's how it is but one thing i will say is that I am working for my salary okay so here i'm definitely working for my salary whereas under epic it was fun and games i'm not gonna lie i was just chilling i was chilling okay um but yeah if that answers that question let's go to the next one okay um how did you get the job that side when did you apply since your contract ended in february requirements for her homeroom teacher okay so let's start with the first question how did i get a job in china so like i said i joined the facebook group south africans living in china um a lot of the recruiters on there so i added them on wechat i watched a lot of youtube videos there are people that speak or drop the um the names of um, recruiters that you can add on um, WeChat. Um, and then I also posted my CV on a website. So my school reached out to me. It wasn't the other way around. That's how I got my job. So I basically went through all of these channels until I found my job or my school found me. <laughs> but like I said, I will um, search for the site because I don't remember the website where I posted my CV. And then I will put it down below just before we continue to the um, next question guys it's very important to also read all the reviews about your school um if you are thinking about um signing a contract okay or agreeing to an offer you need to read all of the reviews there are a lot of positive reviews there are a lot of negative reviews but also you need to take into consideration that we are not all the same okay what i may be able to handle um work wise it may be something that somebody else may not be able to handle um what may be easy for me may not be easy for somebody else someone else may be like hey don't go to this school i literally stayed for two months and i left whereas someone else will be like you know it was tough i worked for my salary it was hard however i completed my contract and then i switched schools one year later okay so yes read all those reviews so that you know what you're getting yourself into and so that you can make a more informed decision of what is better suited for yourself okay um okay so this next question from abagwe when did you apply since your contract ended in february so like i said i started my whole process in september 2022 requirements for homeroom teacher like i said minimum requirements to teach esl um here in china as a native english speaker is um tefl credits tefl and your degree okay so those two things um experience helps okay um yeah experience does help just so that you're in a position to negotiate a better salary i'm not saying that you can't find a job without experience but with it it helps negotiate a better salary okay next question hey jess hi zoe so the school doesn't pay the rent um i mentioned this previously no they do not pay for my rent i pay for it myself out of my salary it comes out of your salary yes it does so i think i answered you as well zoe in the comment section um on my previous video um yeah and i think that is it yeah so those are all the questions that i received if you guys still have more questions um or you really want me to do an additional video on something that i need to or you want me to elaborate more on i am really happy to do it but what i definitely say is please refer to videos that are already out there for example my sister's page she put a whole lot of information in the description box as well as that video that i will tag below about the documentation process but overall guys moving abroad to a country that is excluded from the rest of the world um it's really really tough especially not knowing the local language i'm gonna be honest it's not easy it's hard um it's lonely i don't know if you guys know but my sister and i we are 
far apart we're like a four hour flight apart so i haven't seen her yet so i will eventually see her but it is a lonely journey um you need not keep yourself indoors and in your apartments all the time you need to get out there it's uncomfortable at first um if you look like me you're a dark-skinned hen or man or a gent okay um people will stare at you people will look at you they will most likely talk about you but you know what you need to just remind yourself that you are here to start an amazing journey an amazing experience and give yourself a better life right so you just need to remember why you are coming here and why you are here eventually but yeah if you're coming i wish you all the best if you're not coming i still wish you all the best in whatever it is that you're doing with your life um but i hope you guys have an amazing day further i will check you on in the next video hopefully i'm feeling better by then and have more energy in my video but bye guys see you next time